The US Navy is the only warfighting organization in the world that operates a fleet of large deck nuclear powered aircraft carriers. The 11 carriers funded by the fiscal 2020 defense budget aren't just the centerpiece of the Navy's 300 ship force structure. They are the signature expression of American military power. No other warfighting system can accomplish what carriers can. However, the warfighting features that make large deck nuclear powered aircraft carriers unique aren't always readily apparent because official descriptions of their functions tend to focus on overarching missions like forward presence and power protection. Obviously, other combat systems have a role to play in executing these missions. There are some facets of warfighting, though, that only a carrier, a large deck, nuclear powered one, can execute. What follows is a compendium of 10 key capabilities that make the Navy's aircraft carriers indispensable to deterring and winning wars. Survivable Basing of Forward Air Power The United States has vital interests in many regions, but it doesn't always have access to local bases. Even when bases exist, their availability cannot be guaranteed in wartime. For instance, China would likely target U.S. bases in the Western Pacific during the early days of an East-West conflict. Carriers provide a mobile, survivable alternative to land bases that can carry U.S. air power within striking range of virtually any adversary. Without large-deck nuclear-powered carriers, critical military operations might not be feasible in a timely fashion. Freedom from host country constraints the U.S. has assembled a network of allies in key regions to whom it would turn for assistance in the event of war. But foreign partners don't always see warfighting aims the way Washington does. So, there are limitations on how their bases can be used. There may also be demands for payments or other compensation in return for using bases. Aircraft carriers free U.S. forces from these constraints because they do not require basing rights in order to sustain air operations in a region. The carrier is a base, and if it is nuclear-powered, it can remain on station in a war zone for months at a time. Sustained Strike Operations Against Hostile Countries In the absence of local bases, the U.S. Air Force would have great difficulty sustaining air operations against distant enemies. Its strike fighters have limited range, its aerial refueling tankers are vulnerable, and its heavy bomber fleet has dwindled to fewer than 200 aging aircraft. Navy surface combatants and submarines could strike targets ashore, but in a major conflict, they might exhaust their stores of land attack missiles quickly. Navy carrier air wings, on the other hand, could precisely attack hundreds of large targets every day for months at a time, rapidly eroding the will of most adversaries. The new Ford class of nuclear-powered carriers can sustain up to 270 aircraft sorties per day, and each of the four dozen strike fighters on board can attack multiple targets in a single sortie. Continuous Air Cover of Forces Ashore In the event that U.S. ground forces must invade a hostile country, carrier-based air wings would be called upon to provide overhead air protection. This would consist not only of attacks against enemy aircraft and surface assets, but also collection of reconnaissance vital to the ground forces. Some of the air cover would likely be provided by Navy Marine Corps amphibious warships hosting F-35B fighters, but the preponderance of sea-based air power resides on carriers, and thus the presence of one or more carrier air wings in a war zone could be essential to the survival and success of U.S. forces going ashore. Airborne Early Warning of Potential Threats each carrier air wing includes a squadron of E-2 Hawkeye radar planes that can detect and track scores of airborne threats at great distance. Not just manned aircraft, but cruise missiles, ballistic missiles, drones, and the like. Unlike the radars on naval surface combatants, the E-2 can look down on low-flying threats and is equipped to connect sensor data with the most effective interceptor system through a cooperative engagement network. In combination with other defense assets in a carrier strike group, Fighters in the air wing, combat systems on destroyers, etc., carrier-based radar planes provide warfighters with unique awareness of what is unfolding in a war zone. 
jamming of enemy radar and communications. Another key feature of each carrier air wing is the EA-18G Growler, the world's most advanced electronic warfare aircraft. Growlers are designed to degrade, disrupt, and destroy radar and communication using both kinetic and non-kinetic means. Because they share the same airframes and flight characteristics as the Navy's leading strike aircraft, they can easily escort those planes on missions and suppress defenses that might impede the success of the mission. Few adversaries can counter the Growler's agility in seizing control of the electromagnetic spectrum. Broad Area Offensive Operations Against Hostile Navies Carrier-based strike aircraft aren't just effective at attacking targets ashore and defending friendly forces there. They can also reach out hundreds of miles from the carrier in pursuit of hostile naval forces, precisely identifying and destroying the other side's warship in commercial shipping. Sea Hawk helicopters, hosted on the carrier, have a sophisticated capacity to detect and attack both surface and undersea threats closer to the carrier. In most contingencies, a carrier wing and warfighting systems on other warships in the carrier strike group would quickly sweep the seas of any hostile warships during the early days of conflict. Protection of Naval Forces and Shipping at Sea The diverse warfighting capabilities of carrier air wings, combined with the unlimited range and speed of the carrier itself, facilitates protection of friendly marine time assets, both military and commercial. For instance, an aircraft carrier might be called upon to help defend Marine Corps units en route to an engagement or to assure the safe passage of container ships through a war zone. The other warships in a carrier strike group, including submarines, can assist in this mission, but the vast reach of carrier-based aircraft provides a unique dimension to the protection of friendly forces at sea, just as it does on land. Rapid Response to Remote Military Crisis Aircraft carriers are intrinsically more flexible and agile than Army or Air Force units in responding to overseas emergencies. That is due partly to the basing issues and partly to the complex logistics of moving warfighting forces forward. Even when regional bases are available, it takes time to deploy. In contrast, sea-based forces are configured for a self-sufficiency and typically operate near likely trouble spots. Among these sea-based forces, the aircraft carrier provides the most powerful and persistent warfighting punch, often capable of directly influencing events within days after an emergency arises. With a sustained speed approaching 35 miles per hour, a nuclear-powered carrier can transport its air wing over 700 miles every day. Presence and Persistence in Support of Deterrence Given all the aforementioned capabilities, large-deck, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers provide a formidable deterrent. The arrival of the world's biggest warships within striking range of an aggressor nation, capable of destroying hundreds of targets precisely every day, inevitably focuses the minds of leaders on the potential consequences of war. Because the carrier is extremely well defended and always on the move, there is little hope of defeating it with anything less powerful than a nuclear weapon. And that is an option few enemies could or would entertain. Keeping aircraft carriers forward deployed may be the single most important step U.S. military planners can take to dissuade potential aggressors from initiating hostilities in other regions. The bottom line is that nothing keeps the peace like a large deck, nuclear-powered aircraft carrier. And if war comes, few combat systems can match the carrier's ability to assure victory. That is why carriers are likely to remain the signature expression of America's global military reach and power for the foreseeable future. There's no simulator for an aircraft carrier. And so it's really important that we get out here uh, you know, it's a dangerous business, and so we control what we can control every step of the way, and that is absolutely part of the process of ensuring that we safely build upon what we know and qualify this aircraft carrier for fleet aircraft. That's what we're really going to accomplish here from a technical standpoint with ACT. There are so many firsts happening, and many that we frankly don't even really realize, but we've had the first ever uh, EA-18 Growler, uh, like you mentioned, the first ever E-2D Tracer. There are pilots on board this ship right now who forever will be able to say their contribution to the Navy was to be the first pilot for the first NFO to come aboard the Gerald R. Ford class in that type air. Everyone is coming together now because we're out here doing the thing we're built to do. And it's really a great experience to do. I'm 
Commander Mehdi Akasem, call sign Metro, Airbus on board USS Gerald R. Ford, and we are Warship 7-8.